In this video, I'll show you what to do when you finish collecting data, how to close your survey, how to download the data, and what the data look like. Let's talk about what happens at the end of a survey. Here is my demo survey V2 that I've been working on through these videos. I'll make this survey available to you, the document, and I'll also make some other files available to you that will really help you working through Qualtrics and through these demos. Now, at the moment, this is an active survey. I might want to actually close this survey at some point so that people can't take part in it anymore. This will say, what about all those people who were halfway through their responses? What do you want to do with those? You can allow them to be finished over time, but that will mean that you will need to re-download your data in a little while, or you can just close them all off. You can say enough's enough and I'm done. It's up to you, the choice that you make here. In this case, no one is taking this survey right now, so I'm just gonna close all active survey sessions. There aren't any, and hit pause data collection. So here we go, this is now a closed survey. If anyone goes to that link, they'll get an error message saying, this survey is closed, sorry, you're too late. Now, when I go into my demo survey again, click on that, I wanna to go to my data and analysis tab because now's the day I get to look at my data. You'll see here, I've got a bunch of responses that are being indexed. I will actually see some responses in this place here. And I'll show you the use of using that GC1 embedded data variable that we set up in a previous video to say who has actually finished the entire survey. So this will re-index here, but I'm gonna add a filter on, and this is based on embedded data, based on the GC value, if it equals one. So I know that I have about a thousand and a few responses in here. I ran a thousand test responses and I've done a few previews as well. So let's see how many of them have actually made it to the end of the survey is 530. There's a few fairly random uh, columns shown here. So it's showing consent and gender and ATSI status and some no yes variable here. I'll just get rid of this filter. Now I can actually choose which variables I see. So at the moment it's giving me consent and gender. I might want to add in some other columns here and this could be my embedded data column. I could add my GC column in here, for example, to see what's going on. Here we go. There's a bunch of people here who screened out because they didn't consent. Remember we set up if they don't consent, GC equals two. So that's all looking really good. Let's talk about actually downloading the data. So if I go to export and import, I can actually import some data into a survey as well. Let's say I'm moving to a new Qualtrics account, for example, I can re-upload my surveys into my new account at say at a new institution or something and import the data into them too. But here I wanna export data. This is personal preference, but I think it's a really important personal preference. You can download things as a CSV. You could download them either showing the numeric values, 0, 1, 2, 99, or the choice text, male, female, gender other than male and female, uh, prefer not to say. If you do choice text, then you're going to have to recode them into numbers for analysis. If you do the numbers to make analysis easier, then you need to remember what they mean. I'm a statistical analyst. I've had a lot of people come to me with data sets that have been downloaded in CSV file saying, what can I do with these? And every time I say to them, just go back and download in SPSS. Even if you don't use SPSS for analyses, the advantage of an SPSS data file is that the values one, two, and three, for example, are coded with the labels for them, male, female, prefer not to say. So it's all there in one data set. It's really clear what the values mean. Now I get that a lot of people don't like SPSS, but the advantage of SPSS data files is that the values one, two, and three are coded next to the labels, the actual wording that the participants saw when they took the survey. So for example, with gender, uh, zero would be coded as female, one as male, because that's how we set it up and so on. And you'll have both of those actually there in the data set and it'll make it really easy for analyses. Now, even if you don't like SPSS, you can still import SPSS data sets into a lot of other survey programs. And I'll actually give you a script that we use to import SPSS data into R for analysis as well, just to make it really easy for you. But I would highly recommend downloading data as an SPSS data set. So I'll download this one for you, show you what it looks like, so that you can get a feel for what Qualtrics data comes out looking like. 
So I've got the downloaded file for you and I'm going to show you what the data look like in an SPSS data set. So I'll open this up in SPSS for you. This is demo survey and you're going to find that there are a lot of variables that are just automatically there at the start of the survey. So here we go. Make that nice and full screen. What I absolutely love about this is that it copies over the question text and it copies over the values. So here's my gender question, for example. What is your gender is how the question was asked. And here are the options with the codes that we set up. Zero is female, one is male, two is a gender other than male or female, and 99s prefer not to say. So let's do a quick analysis here. I know I'm doing it in SPSS. You could do it in anything else that you want to do it in. And I'll do it for uh, gender. And here we go. Here's my analyses. Now, remember, this is just a random script going through. So we expect pretty even numbers across these things is just randomly choosing the responses. And we can see that, you know, we've got our values with our labels. We know exactly what those numbers mean. So this will make analysis really easy for you. And the data set is all set up. There are a bunch of additional variables that come across. So it'll give you the start date and the end date. And this actually includes a time marker as well. So if I have a look at the start date, this one started on the 14th of May at 8.45 and ended on the 14th of May at 8.46. It was in progress for 40 seconds. There's a unique response ID variable here, which is an identifier that we can use. Latitude and longitude come across here as well. And it'll also tell you where this survey came from. So these are the preview ones that I did. And here are the 1000 test responses that I did. If I'd use that anonymous link that we got in the last video to send out to people, then this will say anonymous. Here are some responses, right? So let's scroll down and have a look at some of the tests. Anyone who said no for consent, said two for consent, shouldn't be asked anything else. And that's exactly what's happening here. So this is a one way of testing my survey to see if that's working. Um, here's an open-ended question at the end. Where did you seek help? And you can see it just adds in these Latin phrases, right? It's just purely random data going in there. Here's my scoring variable, SC0. This is how PGSI is scored here. And here's my GC variable and whatever else I've set up at the end there too. I'll upload this data set so that you can see what comes out of uh, Qualtrics when you play around with things. But so in this video, I've shown you how to close your survey, how to download your data and what the data look like. So that's it for this series of videos. I've shown you from scratch the basic Qualtrics interface and how to set up a simple survey. I've shown you a few basic questions and how to recode values within questions. I've shown you matrix tables, display logic and skip logic to determine who sees which different types of questions. I've shown you how to set up a scale and how to even score a scale and use those scores within a survey, which is a really powerful tool that we love. I've also shown you how to use pipe text, how to show people previous answers. Uh, and also embedded data within survey flow. Remembering that survey flow and embedded data and pipe text are really the tools that allow you to do some of the most incredible things that you can do within Qualtrics. Once you've got your survey set up, I've shown you how to test it and how to collaborate with your colleagues with the survey. And then I've shown you how to actually set up your survey to be distributed, how to get your survey link, and then how to close off your survey and download the data. Now, if you'd like to see anything else, I will be putting some more videos out there covering some more advanced topics that will show you some of the things that we've been doing in the Experimental Gambling Research Laboratory that really sets our research apart from others in our field. So look out for those future videos. If you like what you've seen here, feel free to like, subscribe and share this with your friends. And if you have any specific requests for things that you'd like to see, pop them in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Dr. Alex Russell with the Experimental Gambling Research Laboratory at CQ University. Look forward to seeing you soon.